How to find altcoins that are still cheap. The market is blowing up right now. Bitcoin is sitting at all time highs and altcoins are doing pretty well as well. But they're running behind. They're lagging. Be honest, altcoins haven't done anything that comes close to an alt season yet. So we're not too late. But how do you find those? Let's take a look. But first, I want to tell you something important. Be very careful right now and like the video. These are the two things that, you know, we're going to make it if you like the video and if you subscribe and you know be welcome but be very careful seriously because i know it's a very euphoric market right now everybody's happy bitcoin is approaching all-time highs and even touched it a little bit um but still the fear and greed index is sitting at 90 and that shows like okay there is extreme greed in the market right now and you know what they say buy the fear sell the greed so i'm not saying you should sell everything you have right now but I am saying, like, be a little careful when, you know, now buying into the market and thinking that it's up only from here. Like we discussed many times on the channel already, if we do take a look at Bitcoin, then you will see that we had such a huge green pump right here. It's unbelievable. And that's, of course, beautiful to see. But, the, the, you know, the harder the pump, the harder the dump. Um, I don't necessarily expect it. But I won't be surprised if one day I wake up, like I so far always do, so far so good, right? Follow the channel, great advice. And see Bitcoin sitting at $45,000 again. And maybe, maybe totally not. I mean, hey, we are in a super bullish market right now. Why is this guy talking like, you know, corrections again? But let's be honest. Every time we get a big pump in the market, it's usually followed by a big dump. And it's very understandable why that is. Why? Because Bitcoin was sitting at all-time highs. So there was nobody with Bitcoin sitting at the loss because they could never have bought it higher than where it was right now. So these people, of course, they will take profits. If you make a 4 or maybe a 3x with the safest crypto asset out there, yeah, some people, they, they, they feel like hey, a 3x or 4x in a matter of like a year. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's take some risk off of the table. Can't blame these people, right? Now, if we do like take a look at the fear and greed index, you can see if you put it on max, the, the greed that we are in right now has never been this high since February 2021, right? February 2021, which was over a year when Bitcoin was pretty you know getting toppy right in the last bull market this was the highest time we had that now yeah i mean it doesn't have to mean we should go down i mean there the fear and greed index also went down but bitcoin eventually pushed way higher than that so we will push higher than that all i'm saying now at this moment you know ah it's a little too euphoric but that's Bitcoin, right? Altcoins are not necessarily too euphoric. Bitcoin is sitting at all-time highs. If you take the altcoin market, we still have 55% to go before we touch the all-time high. And that's normal. Um, in the previous markets as well, when Bitcoin made an all-time high, altcoins still had a long way to go. So altcoins are always lagging and that's what we see right now as well. But this is showing something pretty interesting if you ask me. What we see right here, the orange line is Bitcoin and these candles is the Bitcoin dominance. And uh, the Bitcoin dominance, again, for the newer people, welcome. Hi, my name is uh, Menno, actually, and nobody cares. And the Bitcoin dominance shows you if we're in a Bitcoin season or in an altcoin season. Is the Bitcoin dominance going up? It's Bitcoin season. Is the Bitcoin dominance going down? It's an altcoin season. Now, we have been in a Bitcoin season for actually since May 2021 already. Altcoins were not worth it against Bitcoin. Of course, exceptions are there, but this is the collective market overall, right? So you have the better performers, but you also have the worst performers. And this is the average and this is what you get, right? So, and if you don't want to bet on like, oh, well, this altcoin is going to outperform. Now, if you just want to take a look at the altcoin market collectively, don't want to take any crazy risk with that, then this is a very good way of looking at it. But what I find quite interesting is the Bitcoin dominance and the Bitcoin price were pretty correlated. 
that completely changed though, right? Here, Bitcoin was going up, the dominance was going up. Bitcoin was going a little sideways, the dominance was going sideways. Now, you can see for yourself, Bitcoin up, dominance up, Bitcoin sideways, etc. But what we see right here, completely decoupled, right? The Bitcoin dominance was sitting at the same level as where it is right now, while Bitcoin was sitting at 30k. Now Bitcoin is sitting almost at 70k and the Bitcoin dominance hasn't changed, right? So that indicates to me that this Bitcoin run compared to the altcoin market might be over, right? A lot of people say like the dominance should go way higher than this, at least 60% and maybe even higher than that. It could, but I feel like, okay, but if Bitcoin does more than a 2x and that doesn't do the trick, then what does, right? It looks to me like people, like, you know, money is coming into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is be worth more. But also that money, some, some of that money at least, is taken out of it and been put into the altcoin market to keep it on a good average, actually, on a good balance. So... What would cause the Bitcoin dominance to go down? At a certain point, people will take heavy profits in Bitcoin and they feel like, yeah, the reward is not really there anymore. And we should start looking at altcoins right now. Now, the reward is still here. So the narrative isn't here. I mean, Bitcoin is still going up uh, like till the day of today. Right? Bitcoin just straight up. So you cannot look at Bitcoin and be like, there's no reward, right? There is reward. We're, you know, experiencing it every day right now. But at a certain point, Bitcoin will be a little boring, maybe down, right? And we will maybe do something like this, where we go sideways, down, retest some areas, I don't know where, right? But nothing, nothing is up only, of course. And this will happen at a certain point, right? Whether we get a big flash crash or just a sideways movement. And that's the time where I think like, okay, that's where the money comes into altcoins. And therefore, how do you look for altcoins that are still cheap? Well, one, if you follow my strategy of buying Bitcoin first and later putting it into altcoins, congratulations, you have a good bag of Bitcoin that made a very insane gain. And you can now buy altcoins quite low on the Bitcoin pair. Still, if you didn't do that and you're only in stables or just dollars, euros, whatever, you can also look at the same thing. So what I uh, can show you is, you know, I have my watch list right here, part of my watch list, right? And this is all in dollars. So if I look, for example, at Matic, right? Matic is a nice example. If I look at Matic, I'd be like, okay, do I want to buy Matic, right? Well, you know, Matic, um, it is sitting around 250% from the lows. So you might feel like, yeah, you know, 250% up already missed out on that. Well, you didn't miss out if a coin did a 250% pump necessarily, they will do way more in a bull market. But you might have that feeling like you already missed out. But if you look at Matic on its Bitcoin pair, what do you notice? It made a new low. It made a new low, right? So... You can overlay those two, of course. Um, if we now have Matic Bitcoin right here and we overlay Matic USD, for example, right, you can see actually the same thing, but on a uh, on, or, or a different thing, but on the same chart, right? What you what you'll notice is that Matic on its dollar pair here was at a bottom, right? Now Matic on its dollar pair is sitting way higher, while on its Bitcoin pair it is sitting way lower. But the fact that it's sitting higher at, you know, the dollar pair is simply because uh, it is, it, it's because of Bitcoin, which is like, you know, up like three, four X from there. So Bitcoin is carrying these coins up. So you could still look at coins that look like this, which is very risky, uh, admittedly, because, you know, uh, there is a long way, if it breaks, uh, there is a long way down until the next big, you know, support point, 64%. But you could also look at it like, well, yeah, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, right? If that's the range that you're betting on, then you could be like, okay, you know what? I'm buying Matic. Best case with Bitcoin, of course. But even in dollars, 
you can just buy it because if it goes up against bitcoin again 250 percent and bitcoin stays where it is then matic goes up 250 percent if bitcoin does another 2x in the meantime matic goes up 500 percent right so that's the way how you can look at it look at altcoins that um still have room to grow against bitcoin now it's hard there are two you know there 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 there, there two 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 sides to this right you can look at this chart and either say you know it's ranging and we're now buying the lower side of the range which is a great buying opportunity on the other hand you can also look at it and be like hmm this coin has been a real underperformer right it's under the bull market support band it's making new lows right and although um a lot of altcoins on their bitcoin pair are not doing well if you look at a coin like superverse for example doing fantastic if you look at ronin doing fantastic if you look at Chainlink, not doing that fantastic but holding up a little bit better right not at the lows right if you look at focal Forge, same story not at the lows right especially if you zoom in by the way because if you zoom out enough everything is on the lows but you know eh, it's doing okay matic in this case is an underperformer it's not about matic but just to show you as an example so you could also be like okay i want to be a little you know extra careful with coins like that because you know if everything is doing well then why is this one not doing well right like dug in dive into that what what you know what's the reason for that fact is though every coin depends on bitcoin matter of fact if bitcoin wasn't there all the other altcoins weren't there as well right there is no 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 matic nakamoto out there who created crypto uh, otherwise so understand bitcoin right and to understand bitcoin you want to understand the macro a little more and and maybe the stock market and although it sounds boring bitcoin is not only going up because bitcoin is going up and because we have an etf this time and this and that it's not a coincidence that the s p is also making new highs if the s p was not doing that then bitcoin would have never touched its all-time high as well so you want to understand why is this going up what's going on in the world what right? right what could cause this thing to come down again because it could happen right understand that it's macro bitcoin altcoins right now therefore you could look at coins like um like like whatever like avax and be like you know what avax it's doing pretty well right now it is sitting uh 400 from the lows which is very good always look at a bitcoin pair as well if you look at matic on its bitcoin pair and you take it from the lows it's up 110 percent okay so that's a big difference right so it 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 all uh depends on how the money now is going to flow and that's what you really need to understand right now and you know what they say first bitcoin then ethereum then large caps then all season right now that this is a little what i said in yesterday's video as well the day before by the way um but it is super interesting to understand this because then you're also not getting wrecked in this market because a lot of people say like well we have bitcoin and now we have ethereum no we have ethereum because bitcoin not after bitcoin or anything because if we look at ethereum on its bitcoin pair it is getting wrecked right ethereum against bitcoin is not doing well if ethereum goes back to the all-time high against bitcoin that's up 57 percent so if we take that 15 57 percent for ethereum on the dollar pair that would put ethereum at around six thousand dollars way above the previous all-time high so that says that ethereum is still really underperforming so if it's not even time for ethereum yet then forget about your alt season meme shitcoin season whatsoever because we then first have to move to the high caps and i know dogecoin shiba uh pepe these are the big meme coins these are the, like the blue chip meme coins right you can more look at those also like the large caps money comes there money comes there this blows up that blows up but it's not that the large caps have you know collectively uh been outperforming 
or anything or doing really well if you look at the the total crypto market right so everything like bitcoin ethereum altcoins uh the cash right so usdt it's up 233 percent if we take bitcoin away from that then it is up 160 percent if we then take ethereum away from that it is up 135 percent right so you can already see that bitcoin makes up for all the biggest gains if it's not about bitcoin then it's about ethereum but if you take that away the gains are already smaller and smaller and smaller so that in, i don't know that that's quite interesting to see so the total three you know it's 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 like yeah it's okay it's 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 going up right like everything is going up right now but it's not that i feel like okay uh big ass outperformer if you look at this chart again print this chart in your mind right now you know the altcoin market right got it and then look at bitcoin i see a clear difference right there so yeah and altcoins are going up of course right you cannot take bitcoin from 15k and uh, take it to 70k and and, and altcoins like going down that's like not possible but they are um well most of them have been underperforming quite hard against bitcoin right some are from the lows on the bitcoin pair they are up but overall where they came from they have a very long way to go again um if you take bitcoin and it goes up and the dominance basically does nothing yeah it's altcoins just going up right but it's not anymore that the dominance also goes up with bitcoin so that does show me like hey if it's ever time if you have bitcoin and you feel like i want to buy altcoins with it now might not be the baddest time right could this thing go higher of course it could go higher right but same as what like buying just altcoins with dollars you don't try to time the top you don't try to time the bottom you look at the indicators and be like okay what's realistic for me right here right now also um yeah we spoke about this right alt season when did we had an alt season well we had one here in 2017 and we had one here in 2021 we are waiting for the 2020 four five alt season we'll see right um i originally thought it uh, would play out in 2025 wouldn't be surprised if it happens a little earlier than that but this alt season is not going to be as big as the alt seasons that we have seen before um very simple there are way more altcoins right now right so let's say it's not like the exact numbers of course or not at all but let's say there were a hundred altcoins right here there's a big chance that you were involved in an altcoin that was going up very hard right here when we had an alt season but here we had 10,000 altcoins the chance that you got the right ones was already a lot lower now we have a hundred thousand altcoins we have way more the chance that you get those right altcoins is a lot lower of course right so nevertheless you could be like yeah alt season coming will all be fine but you still have to be in the right ones now like I said how do you find the altcoins that are still cheap you know again first thing like I said look at altcoins on their bitcoin pair now for the newer altcoins that's very hard right like beam for example beam has been going up like only up basically but that's a strong performer so this is likely gonna you know keep on going up because it already showed strength when the altcoin market wasn't really necessarily doing anything better than bitcoin but this one did so i don't see a reason why it won't with matic that's a example that i gave um and again like this is a risky one right because on one end you could look at it like yeah this is in a great accumulation phase let's take quant for example same story you could be like wow it's so low but you could have thought it over here or here or here or here or here or here or everywhere right so who knows how long that keeps on going now you could just risk it be like hey you know we had a bottom here we bounced here might be a confirmation could be a degen buy right now right on the other hand there is a reason why matic and quant have been so wrecked right even bitcoin going up to 70k these altcoins got slaughtered so what does it take for these altcoins to do well actually so it's maybe actually better to look at altcoins that are actually holding up on their bitcoin pair right avax 
huge pump against Bitcoin. And of course, now it is finally cooling off again. Right. Great moment to maybe now buy a little bit instead of here, right? Nothing wrong with that. Also, a um, mistake that I see a lot of people make when, you know, they talk in Telegram groups or whatever. For example, they look at ChainGPT, for example, right? And they say, wow, it's only $140 million market cap, right? It can go up so far. I mean, look at Solana, $58 billion market cap. It could do it that and that many X, right? But you're comparing apples to oranges right here. You're comparing a layer one against a Launchpad AI project, right? So these are two totally different things. If you want to compare projects, compare them to the same niche, actually. So if you want to take a look at, for example, um, again, a chain GPT, look at other AI projects, look at other Launchpads, like how are other Launchpads uh, performing? Like for example, the blue chip Launchpad, CDFI, you know, their all-time high market cap was around like two times as high as Chain GPT. So when it comes to the launchpad part of Chain GPT, I feel like, meh, you know, 2x, and that should be it as far as far as it's measurable at least, right? And of course, this run will be better for launchpad, so it could go way higher. But hey, that's how you can compare it. But don't compare. Um, a DEX token to a real world asset token or a layer one to a launchpad token or a layer two to a gaming token or whatever, right? That's, that's, that's the way uh, actually to get wrecked. So look at projects and, and compare them to their own niches. Also great tip. If you go to defalama.com, you have fees slash revenue. And that's important because you want to know if a project creates revenue, right? If they have money coming in, because then it's likely that they, one, will survive in the next bear, but two, also will grow in this bull market. If a project doesn't raise any money um, from real offering of, 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 of product, basically, then there is a good chance that it will go down. Like, for example, I, I, again, sorry for the people that like this project, uh, but it's just a perfect example, right? There is, uh, do I still have it here? Yeah, there's Hex, for example. Do we have a chart that goes back further than that? Yeah, so Hex, for example, right? Now, where, where did the revenue came from, from Hex? Well, you, you can stake it and you get more. Oh, how do you get the money? Yeah, that's too complex to explain. No, it's not. You just get it from the people that stakes after you, right? That's a Ponzi, right? And that's what exactly the chart shows, right? In a bull market, it has hype. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, nobody gives a shit, right? In a bull market, like Dogecoin can be a top 10 coin. So everything can, of course, right? But in a bear market, for example, you see Hex going down all the way 96%, 96%. Can you imagine if Bitcoin did that? And then when everything started to pack up again, Hex made another dump of 97%, right? This, here it made people rich. If they were on time and if they haven't locked their staking, I don't know how that works. I hope they were able to. But the people that, yeah, unluckily bought it right here, they lost everything, right? They lost everything. Why? Because... There's no product, there's no nothing, right? And the chart now backs it up, right? It, 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 like there was nothing to back it up. So this is especially to be careful with in a bear market, then you shouldn't be in those projects. Like you shouldn't be in any altcoin in a bear market, uh, to be really honest. But um, you should ex especially not be in these kind of projects. But it, you always want to look like, hey, what's creating revenue? What's creating fees, right? Then you'll know that it has room for survival. If you look at Ethereum, for example, people be like, yeah, Ethereum, like, uh, it, 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 it's, it's already high cap and uh, there are a lot better chains out there. And I definitely agree. I cannot agree more. I hate Ethereum as a product. It's too... It's, it's a millionaire's chain, right? People with just like $200, they cannot use it. It's bullshit. Then again, they create 30 million fees, dollars per day. So how likely is it that Ethereum will go bankrupt or anything, right? Like, wow. So you can look at a lot of protocols 
projects. Uh, there's a lot right here that you can look at and not everything is listed right here. Maybe if you look at advanced, uh, then you can see a little more like on um, Arbitrum, for example, what projects work together with Arbitrum. Well, uh, I don't know, GMX, right? Is GMX, is that something that you feel like, hey, that can survive? Well, they have uh, fees, $700 thousand dollars a day for example okay that's that's like decent so th this is a way to 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 know that a project at least has something coming and that they won't struggle like that they always have money for marketing or or whatever right because let's be real bitcoin is nice and in a if it again in a bear market you better shouldn't be in the market but if anything have bitcoin right in a sideways market always best to have bitcoin in a bull market at the beginning also but at a certain point you want to move to altcoins and that period is still coming new altcoins coming out which will make you way more money than buying any shit on the open market right now therefore i talk a lot a lot about about lunch pads and pre-sales etc because that's just where the money is very simple it's a cheat code right but also they always have a delayed effect on bitcoin right if you look at bitcoin what i overlaid right here this orange line this is sandbox for example and if you look bitcoin here you know nice twelve thousand dollars give or take and it went to 60 70 right nice 6x if you look at sand right here i don't know exactly it looks like it was sitting at around six cents and it went all the way up to seven and a half dollars did more than 100x right there right and even in this period right here where bitcoin cooled off and went up and did another 2x sandbox actually went from 17 cents to that seven dollars so you know, you'll see Bitcoin really peaking actually, and even here, and slightly later, you'll see altcoins doing their thing. So it is not too late for altcoins yet, right? Because this is the, the point, if you look at November 2021, let me show you that chart right here, November 2021, that's here, where it all topped out for Bitcoin. And what eventually happened when Bitcoin here was sitting at the highs, right? And stayed there from October until November, the dominance went down, right? So Bitcoin was sitting at a major high, but the dominance went down with like 10%. That's not even this, right? Just this. But because Bitcoin was so high, it had a massive impact on altcoins. So therefore, again, we're now here and Bitcoin is sitting at the same price. Right? So if the Bitcoin dominance now goes down to these levels right here, altcoins will explode. They will go crazy. The only thing we need is Bitcoin to at least stay where it is. Right? Don't go away. Don't, don't, don't go away. Right? Can go up. That's even better. But don't go down. And that's where the real money comes in. Couple of questions from the audience or, or comments before we wrap it up. By the way, like the video if you think the content is valuable. I'm here every day, the market moves fast, so we have to move with it. Um, someone asked, uh, how do you deal with losses? This is the first time I see a person speaking that he lost money twice, just like me on both bear markets and went all in, same as you, respect, found your channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, how you deal with losses? Take it as a lesson. Um, that's really how it is. I think like if I haven't lost before, uh, I made a video on how I made 200K starting with zero and basically lost it all. Um, and I lost way more. But that's experience, right? People on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, they, they, they can tell you like what their experience is and you can try to take it with you. But if you don't feel it, it's slightly different. So sometimes all I can say is, man, you have to lose. And then you build the experience, you know how it feels like, you know what you did wrong, learn from your lessons and take it into the next market uh, again. That, that would be like the best advice about losses that I can give. Yeah, how do we get into stuff like you mentioned, like with Portal? That's insane. I want to get in on that shit, damn. <laughs> Follow the channel or be in our Telegram group or the Patreon. There are links in the description. Uh, once they pop up, I will try to cover them. But like Portal was a gem. They don't occur like daily or so. And I don't talk that much about specific projects. Uh, when I do, 
I try to make sure that the project is actually a gem and Portal worked out really well, uh, luckily. If the price moves because of the ETF, then how the money will go from the ETF into altcoins? I think that's the question. That's a good question. Um, well, one, in my humble opinion, this is where we got the, the ETF. We got the big sell-off right here. This was exactly where we got the ETF. So th the ETF made this pump happen, right? Partly, of course. There's also just retail now FOMOing in. But this is mainly because of the ETF. But this whole thing, we did that, right? So the ETFs might be pumping the retails back. And the retail, at a certain point... Um, they will convert their Bitcoin into altcoins like they usually do. So, I mean, yeah, the ETF, like, the, the ETF money is not going to flow into altcoins. Of course not. But it's not that this whole pump is only ETF money. Uh, the biggest part of this pump is not ETF money, right? I showed you before. If you look at the USDT dominance, broken down, by the way, crazy, never happened. Um, at least not on this specific line, but... This is all money being deployed from USDT into crypto, right? So th th this is money that was already here into USDT. People who were already in the market like years ago. That's not ETF. So uh, yeah, these people, of course, will uh, will put their money into altcoins at a certain point. Um, yeah. Someone said, you went from don't buy altcoins in 2023 to buy altcoins now. Most YouTubers are funny. Like... Yeah, I went from don't buy altcoins in, in, in this market to buy altcoins in this market. How are you going to call me funny, bro? Like, <laughs> did I nail the bottom? No, but if you're looking for a YouTuber that claims that he can, he's fucking fooling you, man. Be careful with that. For me, it's also not about nailing the bottom. It's about risk-reward, right? I, my money would like, and I said that many times, would like a confirmation that the market has bottomed out instead of buying every bottom in hope that that was the bottom, right? That's also a good way to lose money. So yeah, do I buy it a little after the bottom? Yes, that is exactly my plan, right? Also, I've been buying Bitcoin, like I said, many, many, many times. And Bitcoin had the same pump as altcoins. I can now convert my Bitcoin in these altcoins, which I showed you that are on their Bitcoin pair now at the bottom. So... um I don't know, man. Don't worry. You're going to miss out on, every, on anything on this channel if that's uh, what you're aiming for. Uh, someone make a super fuck Floki cum rocket token. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Got a lot of questions. How you can buy Web3 whales? Um, this is our project. We are now hitting a $7 million market cap. Absolutely crazy. This price chart is complete price discovery. Um, it's just some pancake swap, so very easy. If you go to CoinGecko, you can search for Web3 Whales right here. They still have to adjust the website and everything, but the contract address is already updated. So you can just copy the contract address, go to pancake swap, buy it right there with a 6% slippage, um, and go to web3whales.app. And over here, you can stake your tokens to get a portion of the profits that we made from the projects where we invested in over here. So uh, that's how you can do that. But there are more explanational videos uh, online about it. Next year is going to be the most difficult for all of us to navigate, don't you think? It's been a brutal bear market, but now we need to focus uh, when it's... Uh, yeah. Oh, it, it was actually the best bear market ever. A lot of people said, oh, it was the hardest bear market. Well, it, it wasn't longer than average. And it was like the, like Bitcoin never went, uh, like it always went down more in every other bear market. So it wasn't, but it, bear markets are always brutal. Um, and I, yeah, I agree. The, the hardest part is now coming. Taking profits is, is uh, the hardest thing, right? And that's mainly... Because if you look at this Bitcoin chart right here, right? Very simple. You have a lot of time to buy right here. A lot of time. But you don't have a lot of time to sell right here. In this bear market, we also did not have that much time, right? That, that's like, what the fuck, man? But, and uh, again, if you put it like this, you can also say like, yeah, well, you know, we had this whole area here to buy, right? From if you look at this mid band, this 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 blue line, overall wasn't the best buy, but still you made a 10x on Bitcoin, right? Great accumulation. Here, same story, great accumulation in this phase. And maybe here, great accumulation. 
and overall uh, in 2025 we fly towards 500k or whatever right and still a great time to buy um but yeah no it's like harder to take profits than to buy uh, at the right time because it just happens a lot faster um so you already give a good answer uh dca out right dca in and dca out and there are certain certain charts and and and, and you know things that help with that uh but it's not time on the macro scale uh, at all uh, if you ask me somebody asked if i don't hold gala and jasmine yeah like uh jasmine i never looked into it but i uh saw that it was kind of ripping uh let me take a look at jasmine yeah it's doing doing pretty nice man but i never looked into jasmine uh it's not my i'm more into crypto gaming so i don't really look at that gala yeah no um not saying gala won't do nice it did well right it's now at four and a half cents and it went as low as one cent so also like it just does what the market does but i feel like gala and the current market cap we now have like Miria, we have like Fog, like, nah, there, there's too much. Um, that's a better reward than, than Gala, uh, to be honest. Gala has too much competition. I also don't really like how the team handles things over at Gala, to be honest. Um, losing a thousand dollars to a shitcoin that has the chance to do 100x is smarter than investing in Chainlink, which is guaranteed to make you dog shit returns. Trading is about risk versus reward. If you do not risk anything, you won't make anything either. And that last sentence, I agree with. If you want to make returns, you have to take some risk, right? But this is not my strategy. I explained it here as well. Um, and that's really, that depends on, you know, per person uh actually because if you put a thousand dollars into a shit coin that has a chance to do 100x there is a 99.999 percent chance that you will lose your money um i said here as well there are all, only on the binance smart chain there are three million tokens right and we have many chains so let's say there are like 20 million tokens in total 20 million of these shit coins so good luck right how many real winners are there 20 or so so your chance is one in a million give or take to hit that pepe before it blows up or shiba right believe me i tested it i make these rocked and rich video rocked or rich videos occasionally where i just buy random new shit and they all rock me it, it's really like really hard to find a coin that actually does that 100x so by the time you make 100x you have lost so much money that you will still end up in a loss. In that case, I'd rather go with a steady five, maybe 10 X, whatever on Chainlink, than just putting a thousand dollars there, there, you know, throwing shit at the wall, hoping something sticks. It's not my strategy. If you feel like I have some money to spare, hey, it that, 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 that could work out, but the chance that you lose money is just super high. And yeah, I, I like my money too much to really risk it like that. That's not what crypto is meant for anyway, right? Crypto is really innovative. It can do great things. And then there are these brain dead morons making these bullshit coins uh, that do nothing. Right? And I some they do well, right? And that's beautiful. But it's just that like that's like such a small percentage of the overall scams out there that I feel like I'm not even gonna try the, that shit. Somebody said 2025 is going to be a bear market. Anything good to happen will happen in 2024. That's the only way. You're betting against everything right there, man. Um, don't get wrecked by thinking like, I don't know what the reasoning is because I always ask like, hey, why do people think what they say? But I usually don't get an answer to that. Um, I think... If I can, you know, say it for that person, like, hey, the market is moving fast right now, um, so it will be shorter, right? But that Bitcoin is now, you know, going up faster than it usually does. Doesn't mean we will skip an entire year of bull market and put it all into this year, right? Bitcoin this year can still uh, do this and then just do what it usually does right um but saying 2025 is a bear market well yeah, i don't know man if you look at the four-year cycle right then you're saying 
2021 bear market 2017 bear market 2013 bear market these are the bull market years and now predicting that that will go down it's like ooh, okay i don't know um maybe could be of course could be but i wouldn't necessarily bet my money on the fact that this time is going to be that fucking different uh, because that's really dangerous why well if let's say it's 2000 and end of 2024 and Bitcoin is sitting on 120 K or so. Right. And people think like, okay, it's like now 2025, it's moving faster. It's over right now. Let's sell. And the market is like, Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, guy? I mean, it's still boom. It's 2025. Here you go. People will get FOMO as fuck. And they sold here. They're going to buy back right here. And then the market is really going to quit. And these people end up in the loss. That's the market is there to wreck people. And you might think like, oh, I'm not getting wrecked. There is a very good chance that you will. Sorry for that. Therefore, I make this channel. I don't want this audience to get wrecked, right? Because a lot of people here make money, right? If you look at this top, why was this a top? Because people sold that, right? There were people selling this part right here. But who were they selling it to? To the people that wrecked to people that were diamond hands all the way down right these were these people don't be that don't be that you can't win uh, not everybody of course i mean if you make money that money has to come from where from someone that loses right you just don't want to be the loser and betting uh, already at least saying now like hey next year is going to be bear market against all odds it's not putting you in the best position in my opinion um but maybe next year you can tell me you were right i don't know man but it's now it's it's like it's really about um look at history look at what happens look at the charts and just based on that make the best guesses and if I look at the complete history, I'd be like, well, that's not really the best guess, uh, in my opinion. So I'm going to wrap it up right here. Guys, if you, and this is really important, it always sounds like a shill if YouTubers do this, but if you want to trade altcoins, there is a Bybit link down below. Use it. There are going to be a lot of giveaways for the people that trade on my Bybit account, okay? They're going to be airdrops of new projects of great projects um they're going to be giveaways from me towards the community that you don't want to miss out it takes a couple of minutes to make an account right trade there put a little money on it trade there and you are automatically settled to just get shit passively um or occasionally right so that's it for now, man. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn the bell notification on. Don't forget uh, to check out the Patreon. I'll see you tomorrow.